So Adam Sheffer posts this on Twitter, and it kind of gives us a general idea on why some teams might not be amped to take certain positions in the first round of any draft. So this is the hit or miss chart based on two factors. One, the player got a second contract with their set team. And second factor is this player was drafted from 2000 to 2019. So 92% of centers drafted from 2000 to 2019 were able to get a second contract and were considered a hit. 11 out of 12 centers hit, which, wow, that's actually really damn good. And Jackson Power Johnson is going to be available when we pick. Move Teddy Gay, uh, Teddy, Teddy K to left guard from center to left guard. Jackson Power Johnson is our new center. We kind of boot out Cordell Volson. I'm just saying it, it might work out. Tackle was 59%, 38% hit, or 38 has hit, 26 has missed. Now, I feel like tackle, I, I feel like if you could go even farther down the line here and say, like, well, what about tackle, like left tackle to right tackle ratio? I feel like left tackle has hit, uh, has missed way more than right tackle. Just because, again, left tackle is so difficult to play. It's not easy to play. Right tackle is not easy, but it's a lot easier than left tackle. I mean, like, for example, J.C. Latham from Alabama in this upcoming draft, he could never play left tackle. He is a right tackle, but because of his, you know, uh, versati versatileness? Because of his body, because of his, you know, size, he can't play left tackle. He's not uh, agile enough to play left tackle. So, I feel like a lot more left tackles probably busted more than right tackles. Guards, 14-14. Damn. Exactly 50%. Yeah. The thing about center tackle and guard though is you can interchange them for example you can move a center to a guard a guard to a center you can't usually move a guard to a tackle but you can move a tackle to a guard if the tackle is just simply not strong enough or maybe he again can't do certain things he can always become a guard so i wonder how many of these i guess this is based on again the second contract so all these players were bust no matter what even if they did move positions the next little tier here is linebacker, quarterback, edge rusher, and D-tackle. Quarterback makes perfect sense because from 2000 to, I feel like, 2010, a lot of quarterbacks that came into the NFL were bust. And a lot of the reason why was because the offenses aren't like they are nowadays. Nowadays, you have mobile quarterbacks. You have guys that throw the ball for six, oh, not 6,000, but 5,000 yards a season. You have a lot of passing in offenses nowadays, but back in the day, that wasn't the case. I mean, you had 2000 to 2009, you had players like Sean Alexander, LaDainian Tomlinson, um, Marsh, not Marshawn Lynch, but uh, Adrian Peterson. These guys really controlled the league based on just running the football. And then 2010, I feel like to 2019, you saw seeing players like Calvin Johnson, Odell Beckham, uh, you know, you started seeing offenses really get more into the passing game. So, but it's not surprising from that time period. There was probably most of these busts that they say here, 56, um, I'm sorry, 30 busts, were probably a lot of them were from that 2000 to 2010 range. Um, and then probably a lot of the hits were after that, surprisingly enough. But again, the quarterback is also one position that's so hard to take in the NFL draft because... A uh, quarterback going from college to the NFL, the transition is insane. Some quarterbacks can do it. Some quarterbacks cannot do it all. Linebacker is 48%. Okay. Edge rusher, 44%. D-tackle is 40%. Yeah, I mean, again, all those things really make sense. This is where I really care about. This range, okay, makes sense. But this range is like, wow. Wow. Wide receiver being the worst is the most... If you know anything about the draft and you've watched the draft and you've seen draft prospects and how they do in the NFL, wide receiver being the worst makes perfect sense. I mean, there's so many receivers that get drafted every single year in the first round. And yeah, some of them hit. But like, look at Quinton Johnston. As of late, doesn't look like he's going to hit. Jordan Addison, Zay Flowers, 
absolute A plus um, hits, right? So, and then you go all the way back. Chris Conley, I believe, was a first round pick at one point. You had the uh, forget who it was. The Chiefs took a guy in the top ten. Tavon Austin was the eighth overall pick. Like, I'm not surprised at all that receiver is the worst. Tight end being the second worst makes perfect sense, but I actually kind of expected tight end to be a lot more misses. Because, yeah, there's been some hits in the first round for tight end, but it's very, very rare. And most of them, like Eric Ebon, end up fizzling out. So I'm kind of surprised that, you know, tight end's not worse. Safety, here's all I'll say. Running back being better than safety surprises me a crap ton. Because I feel like safety can always, again, it's one of those positions that you can, if you have a safety, move him to cornerback or move him to linebacker. A lot of safeties will move the linebackers later in their careers. Uh, especially if they're really good at tackling, but they can't cover. They usually move the linebackers. So I'm kind of surprised that is such a high bust rate here. Um, running back, again, Trent Richardson just comes to mind when I think of like bust running backs, but... Um, cornerback being 38% is not surprising at all. Um, again, cornerback is another thing where it's like you can move the guy to safety. If he can't cover well, you usually can't move that guy to linebacker. That's the thing. Usually a safety, for the most part, can play linebacker if they're really good tackling and hit power. But usually corners don't go into the NFL from college as really good hit power and really good tacklers. Um, so, again, like I said, not surprising, but... This is why it's going to be interesting, man, how this ends up working out. Because, you know, Byron Murphy, 40%. Now, again, keep in mind, this is from 2000, 2019. The NFL has changed so, so, so much. I feel like every single year in the NFL, we get better and better draft prospects. Where, like, 2019, even though it doesn't seem like that long ago, five years ago, the draft prospects from 2019 to 2024 are not the same at all. 2024 has so many better draft prospects than 2019. So, is it a little bit slated based on the fact that the NFL has changed so much? Yes. But, same, it's still a cool idea, sad concept to look at and see, like, yeah, these draft prospects, this is why certain teams, you know, certain teams aren't going to take certain players in the first round. We talked about this before. Daniel Jeremiah actually broke it down. How tight end position even though, yes, the chances are Brock Bowers becoming a best tight end in the league is not very high, but it's higher than other draft prospects in the first round. It doesn't matter, though, because how much he cost for a, to be a top 10 pick is not worth it. For how much, with the chance of him actually being a bust, plus how much he costs, it almost to a point where he's off the board from a lot of different teams because it's just not there's no reason to do that, right? When you can get other players like a tackle, a center, or a guard who have a higher chance and not be a bust. But guys, tell me down below your thoughts, opinions. I'll see you guys next one. Peace.